And you want to know why some of you have run out in the middle of seasons in your life? It's because you attach people to your life that drain your energy. Drain your energy. Whenever you run out in the middle, Jesus will always make sure you can make it to the end. You know you trust God when you don't require God to perform a miracle for your ego. When you can say whatever it costs me, even if they don't know who I am, you know who I am. And because you know. I, um, um, come on, can you all stand? Is that cool? Yeah. You ain't gonna catch nothing standing. Uh, the first thing is, I want to publicly say that your pastors, your, your pastor creating this expectation is like really unfair. I've, I've only been out of my house preaching somewhere twice uh, since March. I'm out of practice preaching to folk, right? So, but I'm excited to be, aren't they amazing? Oh no, that, no, 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 no. Aren't they amazing? No, 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 no. Aren't they amazing? Who, who, who moves into a new facility in a pandemic, right? <laughs> who, who, who pushes the envelope in vision like this in the middle of a pandemic? And what kind of church has the courage to follow their leader and leaders in such a challenging time? So give yourselves a hand and happy anniversary to the Kingdom Church. And she, she's probably not watching but can you give God a great hand for my wife? I wouldn't be here if she didn't give me permission. Yeah, yeah, I'm that guy. I'm, <laughs> I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I'm that guy whose attitude is, Bay, can I? Please. He's my friend, right? And she loves him. So she was like, sure, because he's one of her favorite preachers. He's become one of her favorite preachers over the last couple of years. Lady Karen, my wife loves your husband dearly, and he's been such a blessing to us. And so I'm honored to be here. Come on, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, in the glorious and liberating name of the Lord Jesus Christ, how we thank you for the privilege of being in this place today. Now, blanket us with grace and cover us so there's no physical damage or uh, anything done that affects us. But while we're here, energize our spirits so we can live amazing lives because that's what you've created us to do and be. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you take your seat, can you open your mouth and give God great praise one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Um, I, I, I want to thank Elder Gerard Bell who, uh, who drove me here. Of course, we, you know, we came in today and we're going to go back um, after service. So I'm grateful to God for uh, persons who uh, protect their leader and serve. And Gerard's one of the best. And, um, and I am honored that he leads our Oakleaf campus. Um, and um, so I'm grateful. <laughs> it was funny as you... <laughs> As Pastor was talking when he called me, he, he's now into this, like, audio text thing. It's just, it's aggravating. It's like, it's like, you know, and he's so, he's so condescendingly encouraging. Hello, man of God, I know you're not doing anything because your church is not open. Can you come preach for me January 31st? God bless you. I almost said no just because I ain't like the message. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you need something else to do in the pandemic because you got too much time to learn how to talk text. That ain't even legal, right? And uh, so this was easy. 
I, I was saying yes when I saw the number. So I'm grateful for you. Um, you um, I'll say this and then I minister. This is how important he is to me. I think it was 2019, I was projecting a need to move forward in our ministry. I'm 56 years old. I am retiring June 30th, 2031. Write it down. I am retiring June 30th, 2031. Are you listening to me? I am retiring June 30th, 2031. Me and my wife are going to get a, either a beach house or a condo on the beach, and I'm going to spend the rest of my life hanging out with my wife and not stressing about y'all. I'm going to leave it to you so you can build all the buildings you want to build and do all the vision you want to do. I am retiring. It is written down. My church already knows it. My successor is already chosen. And I am out, boo. I'm done. I don't even care what y'all think about me today because I got 10 more years. You can say, pastor was wrong. He can't preach. I don't care. Because when you're 56 and you see your exit, you don't let folk who still in the middle mess with you on your way to the end. <laughs> right? So, so I'm kind of in this really interesting place because I can see the end of my pastorate. I'm, this is my 25th year pastoring at St. Paul. My church is celebrating 25 years all year. And, and, there, and of course, you know, we will be sending you, uh, we're Baptists, so we will be sending you an envelope. <laughs> don't, don't get new. Don't get new. Don't get new. Right? So I'm kind of in this interesting place because I'm, I'm really attempting to kind of live out purpose differently with these last 10 years of pastoral ministry. And I'm really kind of, I've thrown myself into being e extremely motivational. In fact, I, the Lord is kind of reinventing me. I, I don't want to do the life coach thing. I really want to do I really want to, I want to light the fire of people who are passionate without knowledge. You have a desire to do amazing things, but you don't have the strategy, the plan. You have capacity potential, but you don't have capacity reality. And so I, I feel this burden, and so I'm doing a lot of different things. So in the pandemic, I had an amazing, I've had an amazing season of productivity. I, I haven't been the guy that's been depressed. I haven't been the guy that whose life has been, you know, my wife and I are more in love now than we were when this started. I am clearer than I've ever been, and my ministry is very clear. So I did stuff. I produced in it. I made effort. One of the things was that I wrote a book out of a series that I did entitled, Even in This, I'm Okay. You're the first church that I brought this book to. I've got about 50 copies, and I would love for you to purchase the copies today. It's a small book. It's only 60 pages. It's not, it's not very thick because I've discovered is that in the, Twitter, in, in, in the Twitter generation, people don't read long books or big books. So I write very, I write, I write short books. I write, I'm short, so I write the book that matches my size. Right, it's 60 pages, but it's a really simple read, and I've got 50, um, 50 copies, I believe, and we'll be out front, and we'll, and we'll do it, you know, social distancing. I'm sure my wife is, is praying in tongues that I do this with wisdom, right? Because um, 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 my wife is the one who goes to bed with wipes. Like, she's like all in with COVID-19 um, protocol. She ain't playing, right? And so I'm going home safe, and I promise you, so I would love for you to purchase this book. You're the first church to get it. Um, and so and, and, and so today, I want you to turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. I talk more than I should have. I, wanted, I want you to turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to jump right into the Word. Uh, some of my time is already gone. So Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Um, I've started a series in our church, and the series is simply entitled, uh, Be Assertive. And, and I'm sensing the season that you guys are in, um, that this message will match or meet where your leader is driving you. Um, I've checked him out a few times during this pandemic. He doesn't know I've been watching, but he's blessed me in so many ways. So in Joshua chapter 1, verses 5, um, it says from the Good News Translation, Joshua, no one will be able to defeat you as long as you live. I'll be with you. 
as I was with Moses, I will always be with you. I'll never abandon you. Be determined and confident. For you will be the leader of these people as they occupy the land which I promised their ancestors. So just be determined. Be confident. Make sure you obey the whole law that my servant Moses gave you. Don't neglect any part of it and you will succeed wherever you go. Be sure that the book of the law is always read in your worship. Study it day and night and make sure you obey everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. What I want to do today is I want to talk about the time is now to pursue. The time is now. Everyone, everyone throw your head back and holler now. now. Okay. The time is now to pursue. There's a quote, and for the next several weeks in my sermons, I'm going to be beginning every sermon with a quote. And there's a wonderful quote that I believe really speaks to this message. Jesse Owens once wrote, we all have dreams, but in order to make dreams come into reality, watch this everyone, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. We all have dreams, but in order for dreams to become reality, it takes a lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. And that's what we really see in the life of Joshua. Joshua was an amazing man. And within the pantheon of scripture, Joshua stands out as one of, as, as one of those amazing models of consistency and conviction. Many who study the central figures of the Bible look at Joshua as a man of incredible strength. His virtuous, his virtuous passion for God and his unrelenting desire to honor the name of God by leading the people of God into the promise was unmatched and unrivaled. Both through his exploits and skilled leadership, he provides an example of godly affection and accountability. And though he was a flawed man, as we all are, he exemplified for generations to come the heart of God. He reminds us that if you courageously go through the process of being mentored and you give yourself away to the standard of God, the sovereign authority of God, which does filter through the flawed, failed, flowing nation, flawed nature of humanity, will produce lives that are extraordinary. See, from the day that we were introduced to him as a tender, naive, but courageous mentee of the legendary Moses to the day that he peacefully exits the stage of human existence, positioning Israel as a military might, we see intimately in detail the life of a man who clearly was after God's own heart. His life is vividly written on the canvas of the biblical pages for all to see. His flaws are never hidden, and his fears and pains are ostentatiously di disclosed. And yet, despite all of it, we see God protecting and promoting him, positioning him to achieve something that no one else could achieve. For Joshua was assigned in his season to accomplish something that would blow the mind of human history. God uses him then to reveal God's self to the world. And through Joshua's amazing response of obedience and humility, we see Israel walking in purpose and destiny. And because of this, we are able to celebrate Joshua. Well, today, when we look at the kingdom church and the 13 years that you have been in existence, you can declare as well that you have a Joshua as a pastor. You have an amazing man of God and an amazing woman of God who have taken on the weight and the demand of building out a community of faith, a community of Konania, a place where people gather, but not just a place where people gather, but a spirit that drives the people who gather in this place to live out the purpose of paying it forward, of meeting the needs of their community, of serving as a global generosity agency, as a means of worship where people can be strengthened and refreshed and so today we not only celebrate Joshua but we celebrate the jocks because God allows you as a church to declare that from where we've come from to where we are it could have only been God 
And I come to you today to declare that you must embrace the fact that you are also called to do the most amazing and extraordinary things. You are not called to be a spectator, but you're called to be an active participant in the unfolding dimension of God's domain in the earth as he takes flawed, frail vessels and employs them for the sake of being revelatory in nature and being manifesting in materiality. God then uses you to give him the best and if you could understand how incredible your life is you would not be jealous of anybody you would not be insecure in any way but you would wake up every day declaring this is the day that the Lord has made and I am excited that I get a chance to go after purpose I need you to wake up today and grasp that as it was Joshua and as it was Jock's So it is you. It's time to be assertive and aggressive. It's time to stop complaining about what you don't like about this pandemic. It's time to stop waiting to exit the pandemic and start being fruitful in the middle of the pandemic. It's time to stop living as a person who is frustrated because of your skin color or your gender. And it's time to declare that God was intentional and meticulous in crafting and creating me so he knew that this was coming and he knew that I would be in it and he knew that I was built to live in it and so I wake up every day with one declaration if I'm breathing I'm still in the game and if I'm still in the game I've got a reason to live wake up in here today open your mouth and declare that this is the day of great opportunity Uh, so I don't want you to miss uh, that and 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 the genius of God you guys ready and the genius of God is he puts you in the midst of seemingly negating conditions (laughs) to prove to you and others how amazingly God he is because Joshua in in Joshua 1 is told by God to go do amazing things. You ready? But he tells him to do this while there are three intense stages that are existing, intersecting at the same time. At the time of this encounter, Pastor, there were three things existing. One is the anxious exit of Moses. Verse one says, my servant Moses is dead. The one who has led us for 40 years, the one who has walked us through this process, the one that we always thought would be around, he is now dead. So now we see the anxious exit of Moses, and then we see the agonizing exodus through the wilderness. The wilderness is not to be glamorized or glorified, and when people talk about I'm in the wilderness, they don't really know what they're talking about, because the wilderness was actually a place of great loss a place of great suffering. The wilderness was a place of great correction. It was a place where a generation buried the people they looked to and they had to discover God while going through grieving. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this. The tough part is on their way to the promise was pain. Okay. Okay, I thought this side was going to help me. I'll come over here. Watch this. Here's what's scary. Don't ever ask God for a promise if you're not ready to endure. Okay, that's fine. Then I'll, I'll go to the balcony. Because whenever you pronounce that you are a person of promise, you are also positioning yourself to endure suffering at a level that you cannot explain because it's behind, it is beyond human comprehension. But let me tell y'all something over here on this side of the balcony. If you can endure the suffering, what God will give you will blow your mind. Here's one of the mistakes we've 
made as preachers in your generation. We've forgotten to teach you how to suffer. We've forgotten to teach you how to endure. You cannot skip over weeping may endure for a night. You just want the joy in the morning, but you got to deal with the night because the night declares that God is able to keep me in anything. You got to deal with the fact that some people are going to reject you and hurt you. You got to deal with the fact that some people are going to mismanage your reputation and mishandle your character. But I got good news when you've been tried in the fire, preach man. When you've been tried in the fire, preach man. When you've been tried in the fire, I need about eight of y'all to throw your head back and holler. I've been in the fire in this pandemic, but I'm still standing. I, I've been through some things in this season, but I'm still standing because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so this is the day that I declare God, I am a person of promise. Because I can handle the wilderness. There, there, there was the anxious exit of Moses and the agonizing exodus of the wilderness. But then there was the aggressive execution of occupying Canaan. <laughs> You, you understand this. You don't occupy Canaan afraid. You occupy Canaan confident. I'll come get you in a minute. The thing that was so amazing is that God was doing all of this talking about where your foot trot is yours and all this stuff while they were dealing with the death of Moses and the deaths of their foreparents, <laughs> and the optics of enemies who had fortified themselves in the promise. Okay. All right, let's try it again. We got a few moments. Watch this. You ready? Here's what's scary. God doesn't remove giants just because you're afraid to fight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lady Karen, you want to know what's scary about God? He'll feed them before he starves them. Okay, okay, I thought that was going to make eight of y'all shout. Some of you wanted God to make it easy, and God said, what I'm making easy is the fight. But I ain't making it, I'm not making it easy because of the sight. Okay, <laughs> because the sight still says the numbers are growing. The site still says that the vaccine rollout has not been done very well. But faith says that the God I serve is going to keep my heart and my mind. Faith says that if I launch vision in this season, I don't know where the money is coming from, but I know who the source of the money is. But my God shall supply. I feel like preaching. David, thank you for inviting me. I need eight of y'all to throw your head back, get excited, because he may not shrink the giant because because he's going to accelerate your maturity so you can manage your next season. I need somebody here to recognize that it ain't going to go the way the enemy thought. So, y'all be seated. I ain't said that in 11 months. Y'all be seated. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? He didn't protect them from Moses dying. And he didn't protect them from the pain of the wilderness. And he didn't protect them from the daunting demand of Canaan. So what does he do? He prepares them. <laughs> he makes you, see, here's what's funny. Half of y'all missed your pandemic preparation, so you're not ready for post-pandemic because you've been preparing to return and God's been preparing for you to progress. Come get it. 
all them days you were sitting around complaining and whining, God said you missed every reason to shout. I was trying to teach you how to praise in pain. I was trying to teach you how to give in uncertainty. I was trying to teach you how to walk out victory. But you wanted to have pity parties. But here's what I discovered. If you are in this room and you're watching me, God is about to flip the script. I need eight of y'all to jump up and turn around one time and holler, I feel a turn around. My arm feels better. Okay, watch this. So God does something amazing. He marries something amazing. He marries divine activity with human participation. You ready? God says, I am giving you the land. Go take it. Okay, let's try it again. I'm giving you the land. Go take it. Okay, let's try it again. I'm giving you the land. Go take it. I'm giving you the land. Go take it. Okay, I need about eight people with stupid faith to raise your right hand and say, he's giving it to me. But I want you to stick your left hand in front of you and say, but I'm taking it. Watch this, because he's giving it to me, it's already a fixed fight. If I don't do anything, then I don't get what he's already given me. Because giving requires participation. He says, I'm giving you the land, so go take it. So what do we have to do then to walk in the fulfillment of God's will, to pursue it, to be assertive, to see everything that God has? There's three things that I'm done. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a traditional Baptist preacher in this regard. There's three things that I see that I'm done. Here's the first thing, that in order to walk in it, in order to grab it and, and grasp it, in order to achieve everything God has ordained, you have, to, you have to be submitted to covenant. You have to be submitted to covenant. Ver, verse 5, Joshua, no one will be able to defeat you as long as I live. Watch this. I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. I'm going to always be with you. I'm never going to abandon you. This is not just about physicality, it's about sacred consciousness. It's about creating in your mind space the continual confirmation and pronouncement of the sovereignty of God as it domiciles or resides with you as you're walking through the sometime idiotic conditions of being human. Okay, all right, I'm doing the best I can. It's, it's about knowing that you're not alone even when you're by yourself. Which means you've got to reconfigure your understanding of space by recognizing the difference between loneliness and aloneness. <laughs> loneliness is my recognition of the absence of another human being. Aloneness is my declaration of the presence of God without a need for you. <laughs> which means most of us will never mature to the level of discerning the will of God because we need a crowd to help us be clear but the best way God deals with you is when nobody is around you it's that God knows that if he can have you by himself then he can trust you with somebody else I need about eight of y'all to recognize that in this season, hold on Brown, I'm coming. In this season when you've been by yourself, it wasn't so you could binge watch All American and it wasn't so you could FaceTime your friends. He needed you to be by yourself so he could talk you into who you're created to be. He needed you to learn how to smile when you were the only one in the room. He needed you to learn how to dance when you ain't have a worship leader. Is there anybody in this room that's said I had amazing worship in the pandemic I'm glad I'm back in the building but I, I learned how to shout by myself I learned how to holler by myself I turned my house into a sanctuary here's what's scary your first place of worship ain't 800 North Pine Hill 
if your house ain't a synagogue, then you ain't got a chance. But that's why you ought to anoint your own house. You don't need him to anoint your house. Slap all your own every door and holler. You don't walk in here unless you got the Holy Ghost. I need somebody. Covenant. Y'all sit down. Covenant. You don't fulfill God's purpose without building out covenant. You got to give yourself fully to God in every conceivable way. You got to open your heart and mind. He told Joshua, don't blow this season with me. I'm going to be with you, but you at least got to act like it. Y'all missed it. This, this speaks of the omnipresence of God, but it also speaks of my recognition of his presence. He can be with me and I not acknowledge him. He can be with me with all of the benefits of being his and I act like I'm not his. There's this amazing sense that God is trying to get Joshua not to go into this new season without understanding that I am the reason you're going to do this. So you are not alone, so stop acting like it. If you ain't got a boo thing, but you got the king of kings, one side of the bed may be empty, but the whole room is full. Okay, here's the second thing. I don't want to bore y'all with my music. Here's the second thing is that in order to do this, we see something else, Gerard. We see you've got to be stirred by courage. Verses 6 and 9 are amazing to me. It says, be determined. And the good news says, confident. Other versions use the word courage. I think that's interesting. Then in verse 9, he says, remember, I've commanded you to be determined and confident and courageous. Then he says, don't be afraid or discouraged. Hey, David, I ran into this amazing definition of courage. Courage is action while coexisting with fear. Stop living in the illusion that you ain't afraid. Embrace your fear, but don't let it paralyze you. There are certain things I am afraid of. I am. There are certain things I'm not, I don't walk into the room being confident about it. But if I walk into the room, my walking into it begins to minimize fear. Okay. Um, Gerard, see if you can help me. Uh, stand right there. Right. Fear is this distance. But the closer I walk, I, I, I want you to start to get, to get shorter. The closer I walk, the more what is intimidating me from afar, God now gives me courage to face close up. Okay, okay, okay you miss your shout. Some of y'all need to shout because the stuff that was supposed to punk you actually inspired you. Right, right. We're not supposed to be in this building. Nobody does this. And it wasn't even just a turnkey. You had to come in here and do a whole lot of work. But somehow, the giant of the opportunity did not punk you into paralysis. It inspired you. I was listening yesterday to, 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 to one of my favorite people, Wayne Dyer. He's now on, on the late Wayne Dyer. And, and, and he has one of his last books was called Inspiration. And he said inspiration is in spirit. He defined it 
it as in spirit. And the thing that hit me was as I thought about that, I said, wow, in spirit, which means that when I am inspired, I am in the spirit. When I'm in the spirit, I'm not afraid of what's against me because no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. In this season, you cannot be afraid and let fear paralyze you. If you are afraid, say, but I may be afraid, but I got faith and my faith is bigger than my fear. And so I'm going to go forth in the name of the Lord Jesus because everything about my life is faith even while fear exists. Mark Twain once wrote, I love this quote. He said, courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. How many times have you not tried because you were fearful? There were things, let me tell you the biggest fear I'm overcoming right now, David. And actually, your pastor started talking to me about this like three, four years ago when he came to one of my preaching in, um, experiences. He actually came with Dr. Darius Daniels, and, uh, and I think it was weird. He always knew of me, but it was interesting that coming with him connected us at a deeper level. And he made this statement. He said, you know, in, in his own way, he said, John, I want to make sure that I do what I can to let my generation know you exist. Right? Remember that conversation? He said, yeah. And so here's been my biggest fear. My biggest fear is how I see me in light of other people. So, so, now, so now I'm working with a consultant. I think it's interesting. And so I'm building out this thing called E3, Empowering, Educating, and Equipping. It's, 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 uh, and it's shifting my voice to be more of a self-help voice. I've been preaching for 35 years, but now I'm shifting my voice. You, you got to be willing to reinvent yourself, right? So I'm going through reinvention, bruh. And so, and so I'm talking to her. Y'all ready? Major revelation. I'm talking to her Friday. And, and I'm talking about the stuff I want to do, and she's helping me shape it. And she said, okay, you need to create John Gunn's Leadership Academy. And I flinched. Because I've always, again, I'm going very transparent. I've always kind of given my gift and my vision to others' personality gifts. Are y'all catching me? Okay, you can only understand it if you've ever tried something and you knew that, that, that you had to go. So, so she said to me, she said, if you don't trust your voice and who you are, then we can't build anything that lasts. Okay. Fear ain't always what you see. Sometimes your greatest fears are the unresolved issues in you that makes you compromise your vision because you don't trust your anointing. Okay, watch this. I'm talking to eight people. Today, you're going to walk out of here and you're going to put your name on your dream. Okay, okay, okay. I thought I was going to talk. I'm talking to myself. Today, you're going to walk out of here and you're going to look at what you know God's created you to do and you're going to say, in 2021, I'm not waiting for anybody to give me permission because I wake up too many days with purpose in me. Is there anybody in here today who says, I got dream in me. I got a book in me. I got poems in me. I got music in me. I got a business in me. But I've spent too much of my life waiting on a word for a prophet. I don't need a word from a prophet because as we see from this election, some of them ain't making it right. I need a word from God and if I trust my relationship with God, I can trust the vision. I need everybody right now to act like you got a piece of paper in front of you and act like your finger is a pen and I want you to sign your name to your vision. I want you to sign your name. I want you to tell the devil I ain't scared no more. John Guns, John Guns, come on, David Jock, Karen Jock, sign your name. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm closing. I haven't preached this long in a long time. I'm tired. Whew, Jesus. I'm going to need a week off. Y'all ready? 
Here's the last part. In order to walk in everything God has for you by being assertive and aggressive, you got to be submitted to covenant. You got to be stirred by courage, but you got to be stimulated through compliance. Okay, watch this. There it is. Watch this. There's a process about compliance or obedience. It's in verses seven and eight. The process is read the word daily, reflect on it, <laughs> reverence God, and then respond. I, you know what's funny? I actually wrote this in the office, in the green room. Because I had it ri written a different way, but the Lord showed me four R's. You ready? Read, reflect, reverence, and respond. Here's what's deep. Because most of us aren't readers, our reflection is distorted by the limitations of our personhood. <clears throat> okay, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Every day I wake up, I read the Bible first, and then I read 20 minutes of some kind of book. I've been doing it the last two weeks. I'm determined that I'm going to be a thinker. I'm determined I'm going to, and, and people say, oh, you're such a thinker. I haven't even scratched my surface. And one day I came to terms with the fact that maybe I'm impressing people who don't work at it. Like, like if you take a two, if you take my grandson Trey, right, Lady Karen, and you put him next to me, I'm taller than Trey, so I'm impressive when you put me beside Trey. You put me beside Kevin Durant, and I'm short. Who are you standing next to? Okay, so for most of us, we don't read, we just listen. Thank you. <laughs> Notice, compliance begins with reading and then reflecting. Reflection is when your mind drifts into regions of possibilities that your body doesn't presently have access to. A reflection allows you to have encounters and engagement with the eternal while being stuck in traffic. Reflection allows you to clean up your inner life so your inner life doesn't distort your outer activity. Are y'all still with me? So when you enter reflection, you are entering a place of deep meditation where your heart is open and your mind is available and you are no longer a prisoner to the liability of your own flaws and the limitations that are placed on you by people who only know you from your past. Because even if you... Even if you've walked with me, you still only know me from where we walk from. That's why some of you are frustrated because God's giving you dreams and you're trying to share it with folk who only have past. Okay. All right. So, and then there's reverence, and reverence is worship. And worship is not, you know, the shouting and the jumping. Worship is a conscious awareness of the presence of God and a throwing yourself into the deepest domain of God awareness to the point that God awareness begins to shape how you understand yourself. So now you see yourself through the lens of your encounter with the eternal, which brings you into this allness of God. And now you have a deeper appreciation for the cross and you have a deeper awareness of the Holy Spirit. So while other people are trying to draw you into the narrowness and the pessimism and the Gnosticism of their existence, you reject it because your worship life becomes buffers which allow you to live among people but never be damaged by the people you live among. Meaning then that you can die on the cross and still say, Father, forgive them because my worship just don't make me speak in tongues. My worship makes me love my enemies. My worship makes me see the good of God in everybody. My worship allows me to deal with Trump while celebrating 
Biden by dealing with the people who say I don't deserve to vote but I ain't gonna let you I ain't gonna let you make me hate you because if I hate you I lose my authority with God so because of my worship I can deal with the proud boys and black lives matter in the same room because who I am ain't tied to who I'm with who I am is tied to who I came from and since I'm made in the image of God my worship out of my reflection based upon my reading creates an amazing life I'm sorry I, I'm sorry I went into my own place I know some of y'all just staring saying when is he going to finish I'm going to finish when I'm done here's the good news once you become a reader and a reflector then you going to have a worship life and a worship life is I don't need a psalmist I got too much knowledge of who God is because everything about my life is defined by him and so so reading reflecting reverence and then response now it makes sense when it comes to the Jericho walls and walking around because when you read it and thought about it and you worship now you can do it y'all ready and you can do stuff that other folks say is crazy I'm done and so watch this when you comply and obey God's word, you will find success. Everyone say success. And those that are watching, just hashtag success. And when you discover success, you're going to be discovering something amazing. That in success, God's got the last word. When God gets ready to bless you, he's got the last word. I'll see y'all later. I need somebody to throw your head back and holler, God, you got the last word. And because God's got the last word, there is nothing that you will face where you will not have victory over. Because God's got the last word, there's nothing you will endure that God won't bring you through. Because God's got the last word over the jocks and the kingdom church, everything that God has given for you to do is going to be done and it don't matter who don't like you and who don't want you to do it. I need somebody to throw your head back and holler, God's got the last word. I'll see y'all when I see you. I guess I'll see you on the other end of the pandemic, but here's the good news. Because God's got the last word, I can walk in confidence and courage. I know you can't touch each other, but can you just look at your neighbor and holler through your mask, God's got the last word. And because God's got the last word, I wake up every day victorious. Because God has got the last word, I wake up shouting and declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made. You know, I ain't done this in a while, so let's see what we got here. Is there anybody here that can open their mouth and testify that my God's got the last word? See, he had the last word over Noah and the ark. He had the last word over Abraham and infertility. He had the last word over Joseph and his jealous brothers. He had the last word over Moses and a stubborn Pharaoh. He had the last word over David and an undefeated Goliath. He had the last word over Hebrew boys and the fiery furnace. He had the last Last word over John and the Isle of Patmos, over Paul and the Philippian jail. Oh, I'm tired now. But he had the last word over Jesus. You know we gotta talk about this on a hill far away. Jesus Christ died. See, that's the part you shout on. He died, but early Sunday morning, God raised him up and gave him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow every tongue should confess I dare you to open your mouth and give God a praise because God got the last word and because he's got the last word no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper I'll see y'all later in the balcony but be not dismayed whatever 
be tied. 